Hey guys, John here. So I have a very interesting process that I kind of wanted to show you guys. And this is going to be done in pigments. And as you can see on the right hand side, I have an oscilloscope. Now the whole point of this video is showing how to use distortion in kind of a creative way to really make your own waveform. So this is a lot of fun and there's so many possibilities that you can come up with. So I guess since I love the analog engine, it's one of my favorites. Let's go to the analog engine and let's select our sine wave here. All right, so we see our sine wave. Beautiful and pure, right? Just a pure tone. Okay, so now let's mangle this dude. Okay, so if we go to our effects, right? So we have a, the delay and the reverb by default. Let's get rid of those because we don't want these. So, and I guess get rid of the reverb for now, I guess. Okay, so we have an empty rack here. So now we have our sine wave. So what we can do, and this is what I love about pigments is how we can use a lot of the same module over and over and over and over again, right? It's really cool. So we go down here to none and let's select distortion. Okay, so we have something like that. Now as you increase this drive, we can see how we're just changing this waveform almost entirely. And really the drive and the dry wet is really what's going to be, I guess, your, your points of control, right? So for example, if we went to something maybe like uh, tape, for example, you have a little bit of extra curve like that. Because there's a pure tone right here. And we have something like that. So it's just adding a little bit there and say, okay, we like this here. Now let's go and add another distortion. Now, a cool one is going to be a couple of these. So uh, the dual fold, the wave fold, and the wiggle. So these are all kind of fun to play around with. So if we went to this wave folder and we start increasing this drive here, <laughs> we're already starting to get some wild shapes. Right. And it's kind of a lot, you know, we can always, we don't have to always just squash or change this entire waveform the entire time, right? We can always add a little bit more and more. Sometimes we might end up with like three, four, or sometimes even five different distortion modules, just adding a little bit of subtle changes to it. So maybe something kind of like that, right? Starting to fold it and we can change the time too. We can do triangle a little bit. So now we can go, let's increase our envelope a little bit here for a release. It's kind of getting a weird sound to it now, right? And this is part of that fun here. So next up, we can go to yet another distortion and maybe for this guy, wiggle is kind of fun as well. It's kind of cool how that changes it, right? So especially on these sides here, kind of notice how that changes. Right, and then we can go to maybe the dual fold. Now we're getting some interesting shapes down over here. Okay, so we have this kind of shape and why not add another distortion, right? So let's see what else we can do with this one. Let's pick for the algorithm here. I do like germanium, that one's really cool. The stairs might be kind of fun. Maybe howl might be kind of interesting, so. Right as that cross there, that was actually pretty cool. Cool, okay, so we have interesting waveform. So now if you go back to our synth page, we're really just using one sine wave, right? Now if we added another one in here, maybe dropped it down an octave, something like that. It's interesting weird sounds like that, right? Now something to keep in mind if we're like, okay, we like this sound, let's do some filtering. It doesn't really have the effect that we think it does, right? Because this filter is happening before it's going into here, right? So what we can do is we can go down here to the effects and we can click this guy. And then where are we here? We can find our own multi-filter. I always select the almost the multi-band here, but multi-filter. And that's gonna have a more predictable, I guess, filter sweep. Or right, we have something like that. And if we went to this guy here. Right, it sounds a little bit different. I mean, it's cool, but you know, this is gonna be a little bit, like I said, more predictable. 
what would be really cool, and I would love this to have in a new feature, if all the, or a new update, if all these filters here were also available in this module here, because as of now, we have a low pass, high pass, band pass, notch, and some comb filters, which is very useful, but it would be kind of nice to have the MS-20 here. That's kind of my main thing I've wanted. <laughs> So we can always modulate this here like we normally would with an envelope. Maybe change the slope. It'd be actually kind of a cool bass. So here's another weird, I guess, trick for this. So. We're doing all this with a sine wave, right? We're kind of mangling the sine wave now. What's kind of fun as well is if we sneak in a little bit of noise. Now we can do that in the noise oscillator here if we want to do something like that. It's kind of cool, but it's nice also to go to the utility engine because we have a lot of different types of noises to choose from. So if we turn on this guy, we can go with that guy. We can go with the regular white noise or this sample here. It's actually kind of cool there. And yeah, you know, without the filter, it would sound something like this here. So pretty wild. And if we really want to make something like this very nasty, what we could do is select the multi-band. <laughs> We could have something cool like that. And then maybe at the end, we could do our filter again, something like that. Depending on how you want to do it. Now, one of the coolest things is now with Pigments 5, we have the post effects. So now that we've done this entire mangled process, we can add effects, reverbs, delays, whatever it is that we want to the end of that. Because previously, if we used all of these slots here and we wanted to add a reverb, we kind of couldn't really, that reverb would actually be reverberating this noise and clean two clean sine waves, right? So back in the effects now, we can go here and say, let's say we want a, uh, a reverb. do something like that or what's actually even funny if you want to make it a little bit <laughs> a little bit more disgusting if you go to the uh where are you multi filter you can always change this to a comb filter Make it kind of wild like that, or with a uh, feed forward. But yeah, that's just an op option, opportunity for you to think about if you'd like to do something like that. Okay, so. so it's a lot of fun to create different wave shapes like that. Distortion can be very fun because Sometimes you can make waveforms that you wouldn't have made otherwise with different methods, right? So it's, it's kind of fun. And using a pure tone like a sine wave really goes to show exactly what you're doing. Obviously, you can change it to something else, like a triangle. See what it sounds like, a saw wave even. Square. But the cool part with the sine wave is, right, it's just one harmonic and you're just creating more harmonics out of that via distortion, which is a lot of fun. So, yeah, that's pretty much the concept of this video. Um, you do have to think about what uh, filters you want to put after this, right, because we're going to be, it's going to sound different with this filter, right, because this filter goes to filter two and then filter two goes into the, uh, into the effects unit. So that's something just to think about there. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and make some cool sounds making sine waves distorted. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. See you in the next video.